Wrong ending. Wrong key. I just saw a post uh, on one of our lessons. It was on that. Did anybody recognize that? What what that's the end to? And the question was, well, hey, do you play the fl flashy lick at the end? And I said, yeah, probably, but I can't remember it. Well, had to had to go look it up. But that's it. The flashy lick at the end. I'm sure everybody can name that tune. Maybe not the, um, let me see. Got another question about this one. Got carried away running a little bit late today because it, it is friday june 11th is that right yeah um heading into uh another big week of family birthdays and anniversaries and things like that uh we'll talk more about that maybe next week we'll see uh but running late because since like six o'clock this morning i was glued to tennis really exciting day and uh um boy Djokovic. Unbelievable. So, tennis fans out there you already know what I'm talking about. If you don't care, yeah, never mind. That's all I'm going to say about it. It was pretty pretty cool. Um, what has been going on around here? Got a little bit of stuff done. Got a, got a review of Steve's um, up for today.
So uh, keep those keep those uploads for review coming in because I now have a little bit of time to do them. So although it took me a long time to get to that one, and I think I explained that last week because I got so wrapped up in the song and in um, thinking about doing a whole lesson on it that didn't quite happen. Uh, I have two big things to tell you about today. Um, I'm, I just forgot what the first one was, though. Um, oh, no. Speaking of, of Steve and his review of um, today, uh, tomorrow for COA members. Now, um, you know, so the COA is, is our um, place where you get some really extra perks. And uh, the COA members, we're having a webinar tomorrow at noon Pacific time. So if you're a COA member and you haven't seen either the email or the message on the forum, be sure to check those, those places because we'll uh, spend an hour, maybe an hour and a half, uh, doing a little bit of individual uh, pathways, finding out where you are, what you can do, what you can't do. So uh, that's, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because it's been a while since we've done one and I've kind of got it back on, back on the radar. So um, lots of advantages to the COA program. You know, one is one is you can put up uh, four reviews a month, four things for review a month. Um, and I know that's a little bit extreme, but people, yeah, carp carpenter bee coming in here, a lot of wood. Ooh. Uh, anyway, so um, COA webinar tomorrow, June twelfth. And um, the other exciting thing was yesterday. I took a sort of a field trip to go see the uh, Green Mountain Retreat, which is the old presentation center where we did summer camp, uh, we did international guitar camps. It's right next to a place where I did, uh, what a weird coincidence. Last week I talked about my life at, at mm. summer camp, learning songs like Today and uh, Dona Dona. And uh, um, what else did we sing up there? I think we did a little uh, Woody Guthrie tunes. Mm. Oh, but I mentioned the traffic songs that uh, Chris Clark taught Mike Mullins and me back, back in those days. Um, uh, I think we probably did feeling all right too. Anyway, anyway, just up the road from Echo Mountain Ranch is where the new Green Mountain Retreat is, and uh, it's where we did our IGCs in 2015 and 16. Yeah, and then they shut down in 17, and we moved to Asilomar. But the place has been renovated, and it is way more upscale. I always, th I already thought it was pretty upscale when when we first started going there. But uh, took a tour of the cottages and stuff like that, and so our camp is coming up in September, September 13th to the 17th. There we go. Do the math. Four days. Five days, really. Four, three full days and two half days. That kind of adds up to four full days. Four nights. Uh, but boy, the accommodations there are just stunning now. Most of the cottages have, you know, room for six or eight people in, in four or five bedrooms, and... Um, most of them have like a full kitchen and a living room and a dining room and stuff. So it was really fun meeting a representative from, from Green Mountain and, and that. So if you're thinking about joining us at a camp, we do have um, right now there's room for about five more people, um, maybe a couple less. But if you're thinking of joining, you got to jump on it soon. So um, I think that was it for the big news. I'm around here. I was, what, um, it was, no, no, that was it. I, yeah. Um, it's been an interesting, interesting week of weird weather here in California and actually about all back east too all of a sudden all my Giants games are getting rained out they're on the east coast um, anyway let me um, let's play something you know I was talking to here you know what no let's have a little lesson um, who was it Lisa I believe was working on the Amy McDonald song that Vanessa put up a couple of weeks ago and we got into the discussion of playing bass notes when you're when you're using a pick, not so much when you're finger picking, but how it works out that you usually want to have something like this, alternating back and forth between the sixth and fifth strings when the root is on the sixth string, because generally the best the best bass note to have as a second bass note, meaning on beat three of the measure, is the fifth of the chord. So when you play an E chord, or any E family chord up the neck, you've got the root on the sixth string and the fifth of the chord on the fifth string. And so that gets you this sound. If I'm going to F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, and not coincidentally, there's a good uh, math, mathematical reason for this. If you're playing a chord out of the A family, got the root on the fifth string wherever you happen to be and at the same fret on the sixth string you have the fifth of the chord now so and that's because the distance of a fifth on the guitar well the distance of a fifth all the time is seven half steps seven frets 
the strings are tuned a fourth apart. So from E to A is a fourth. Then I need to go two more frets. I have to go to B to get a fifth, which is why the shape of a power chord is a root and a fifth. So here I'm playing G. I've got G and the fifth of G, D. Well, if I play that power chord on the fifth string, I've got the root on the fifth and the fifth on the fourth string. Okay, following all these numbers? But I also have that same fifth an octave lower at the same fret that the root was on, on the sixth string. There's up a fifth, and here is down to the fifth, because down a fifth and up a fourth are the same thing. Down to the fifth is actually down a fourth. Okay, I think I just talked myself into, I uh, painted myself into a corner. But it means if you're playing a chord out of the A family, like B, I'm gonna alternate from five to six. I go to C sharp minor, same thing. Go to D major seven. Anyway, so um, the conclusion kind of that we came to is when, when you're in the E and the A family and strumming, not finger picking, if you play the root on either the sixth string or the fifth, and you play the fifth on the other string, whichever one it is. Okay, now when you're finger picking, different story, because when you're finger picking, you play four bass notes in a measure. So if I'm playing A minor, that's what I want to do. I want to go up to the second bass note, from the root up to the second bass note, which happens to be a fifth. Then I can, on the third bass note, go down to the lower fifth, and back up to the higher fifth. something equivalent on E minor where I went from 6 to 4 and then 5 to 4. Alright, let's make up something here. finger pick and ramble to end the day okay that is all i have to say today june 11th be back next week with who knows what <laughs>